are rolling on December 5th for part two of our persuasive speeches where we were rudely interrupted. You can be over there, yeah. <laughs> where we were rudely interrupted by a battery that chose to uh, go dead. So now we're picking up Sydney's speech, who's urging political activism. She's about to give us her first reason. So the first reason you should become politically involved is because without knowledge, there is no democracy. So I walked into my internship this past summer at a political consulting company, not being politically involved, being completely unqualified. And on the first day, we had a competition among the whole office on who could predict the election results for a special election in Georgia's sixth district between these two candidates I had never heard of before. There would be, it was John Ossoff and like Kellen Heller, which was apparently extremely special election. Do you know who they are? Oh, well, I did it, so it's okay if you don't. So how am I supposed to know what to do on my internship or have a decent conversation with the people around me in this field if I'm not even caught up in politics myself? It was a special election because apparently if John Ossoff would have won, it would have kicked out a Republican in a seat that has been held as a, under the Republican Party for an extremely long time. So it would have mm -hmm. kind of given the Democrats more of a say in the House again. Mm -hmm. But on a more local level, you need to become more politically involved because when you vote on the measures, I honestly, I used to never know what they were about. I'd be voting yes, no, oh, maybe on this one, I'll just check a random box. Because I didn't actually know what they were talking about. But I realized that's not the best way to have a say in what happens in your country. Yep. So you should really read up on what's going around or what measures are going on around you in order to actually use your voice um, mm -hmm. like, for a good reason. Good. The second reason you should become politically involved is because if you don't vote, you don't get to complain. So, in a study done by the Hugh Research Center in 2016, right after the um, presidential election, 44% of of age citizens said they regretted voting. You don't want to be sitting there after Trump was elected, if that's not what you wanted, thinking, what could I have done? Well, you could have voted. <laughs> that's one thing. Maybe you might think, oh, my vote doesn't really matter. I live in California, or like, what does one vote do? But combine one vote together with the 44% of the people, that can make a difference. So today I will give you three concrete actions that you can take in order to become more politically involved. One, register to vote. It's not that difficult. You can Google it, just type in register to vote, and then your, um, your state. Also, around election time, people at UCLA make it extremely easy for you. Someone will be walking down Greenwalk. Have you registered to vote? Do you want to register? What happened to me was they came knocking on my door at like <laughs> 9 at night asking if I wanted to vote. Not vote, register to vote. And they had the forms and everything. They said, oh, we're evening, um, I take the form for you, we'll turn it in. I was like, this is so easy. How can it not get any easier? The second thing you should do is you should actually vote. If you're registered, go to the polling section. It's not that difficult. And sometimes they even send it to you. And the last step you can take, if you don't want to register to vote, if you don't want to vote, is just read up on the news. If you're sitting in class, not paying attention, just might as well just look at the news. Go to the LA Times, see something like that. Close the computer. <laughs> She's <laughs> ridiculous. Give her respect. She's talking. Come on, man. That's so rude. Another thing you can do is when you're sitting and you're procrastinating on study and studying, you're already on your laptop anyways, pull up LA Times, pull up New York Times, just educate yourself on what's going on. A few benefits that you receive if you follow my proposal is you'll feel better that you actually have a say in what goes on around you, and subsequently you'll be more knowledgeable. And third, if you vote, use the cool little I, little, I vote sticker, <laughs> and you can put that on your laptop. So, in summary, I've given you two reasons why you should become politically involved, three actions you can take, and a couple benefits that um, will follow you accept my proposal. So in conclusion, there should be no doubt in this room that you should at least become a little more politically involved than you are right now. Like Thurgood Marshall said, this is your country, this is your democracy, you should at least have a say in what goes on around you. Thank you. Thank you. What was the time? 4.57, boy. <laughs> right on the wire. What did you like? I mean, it 
name is Harnor. Hi, Harnor. I really enjoyed this speech. This topic could have been controversial, but I think the way that you handled it and you made it a bit more informal, which I think was really good to get across to us. And I also think that the way that you spoke today really captured like your voice and who you are as a person. So I thought it was really good. Improvement. I'm Crystal. Hi, Crystal. Um, I really liked your speech as well. I think it was like an important topic and relevant. Um, Mm-hmm. Yeah, you sway a little bit. Stay in the power stance, please, Sydney Ellen Wade. Mm. Yeah, mm. let's talk about this topic. Um, yeah, look, at, at its face, you know, it's sort of like, in my opinion, it's a little like brushing your teeth advocating brushing your teeth. I mean, I, I just, I think it's outrageous everyone doesn't vote. And um, one of our debaters when we had this public participation uh, topic for the year argued that we should have mandatory voting, that everyone had to vote, you know. Another approach to the problem. It has some problems of its own, but okay. So you quoted Thurgood Marshall. You can't go wrong with him. Uh, did you tell them that he was a very distinguished Supreme Court justice? And I suppose you had to be living under a rock not to know that. Uh, your thesis preview was good. Your significant statement um, involved the audience, and I like that. Um, as for the interruption, I thought you handled it with grace and great equanimity. On the... Um, argument that you made that there's no democracy without a, a, an informed electorate and knowledge, uh, I wish you had, you gave a personal story and some people knew of the story. I thought it got a little complicated and lost. And not, I found it was not particularly effective as evidence of um, being unqualified and prepared, unprepared, but, uh, and you know, you, um, uh, how will I say this graciously, you assumed, and maybe you're right, that most people in this room hate President Trump and didn't vote for him. And you may be absolutely right. So your little digs at our president and how could we go so wrong because we didn't vote probably went over well with 80% of the people in the room. But, you know, you take a chance of alienating others. So, you know, you just be aware of that and be aware of that danger. Yeah. Um, your second reason I love you don't have a right to complain if you don't vote. Regretted not voting. You made the case that it can add up. I like that. Your actions were all good. Um, and your benefits were excellent. Your summary good conclusion and you're tied back to Thurgood Marshall worked perfectly. Let's talk about your canines. Uh, I want to say one other thing. Um, and maybe you were right and not, I don't know, what, what is your major? Double room, policy and communication. Policy and communication. Maybe you were right, because I've heard this speech in my class a couple of times over the last 40 years, and some poli-sci majors larded up with, mm, 
ad nauseum studies about voting and micro and mini statistics that are just your eyes glaze over when you hear them. You didn't have that problem, but I think just a few more studies of things might have helped your credibility. Yeah. So, benefits your canines. Vary my voice and speed of speaking to emphasize different points. Hold the eye contact longer with my audience. Try not to look around the room when I can't remember what I want to say. How did it go? I think I varied my voice more than I did in my last speeches. I kind of used a little more humor and like used more of my style than just kind of yeah. like monotoning it. Yeah. Um, the second one, I tried holding eye contact more. When I got to this side, it was a little easier because they give it back. So, <laughs> yeah. so that was nice. They're friendly over there, yeah. <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Yeah. And <laughs> I still kind of looked around the room, but I tried keeping it more like eye level. So if I wasn't looking straight at them, I was still kind of okay. in the same spot. Good. So you got it done, <laughs> Sydney. Thank you. Okay, uh, I take it there's no one else burning to go, right? Okay, our work is done. Return with honor. Uh, let's turn this off.